Hey, I'm Brett Ahart from Alone Patagonia and Alone Redemption. Bam! Rainbow trot up in this If there's one thing I learned during my time on the show, it's that the shelter you construct plays a vital role in your success. <laughs> and could be the difference between whether you live or die. Ah! Cross the threshold of Fort Moosehead. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my god! New shelter, new shelter, I can stand up. I get smoke starting to make my head go a little bit wrong. <sighs> so join me as we take a look at all the shelters from Alone Arctic Circle. Like a glove. This is it for today on the shelter. Cubby started designing an A-frame style shelter. This is a shelter built with a sloping roof, which is good for water and snow runoff, which can be collected for drinking and cleaning. Let's take a look. Good morning, day two. I'm gonna work on scouting and uh, see where I wanna put my shelter. It's pretty nice up here. My only thought is whenever it gets snowy and the weather changes, what's gonna happen? Do I wanna be down in the trees a little bit more? Covered, it'll probably help me keep warm. I just gotta find the right place. I'm gonna go exploring. The tree cover is near the river. I wanna be on solid ground, and so that's where my shelter is gonna have to be. It's not my favorite location because that's also the highway for all of the animals. There's grizzly sign, there's moose sign, there's wolf tracks in the mud. This is a dangerous location, but I wanna be dry and sheltered from the wind and the snow. And so tree cover is, is necessary. So there's a lot of resources in this area that's gonna help me build my permanent structure. I found where I want my site. I've done a lot of searching, a lot of walking around, trying to find the right spot. And uh, this is just below that bluff and then river on the other side. So I can have my back up against something there and then I have this river here. And I've got three trees right back here. I know it doesn't look like much right now. It's really thick, but I plan on clearing all this out. And uh, there's three trees that I wanna build in between right back there. I feel pretty good about it. Slow and steady. Just gotta keep on reminding myself, slow and steady. Still got a lot of work to do. I'm aiming to build uh, something that's, that's gonna be able to hold a lot of weight. So the structural integrity of my A-frame is gonna be with heavier materials. And then everything else will be lighter materials, all the alder and the willow that's around me, I'll use to weave walls. And yeah, that's what I've got right now. That feels pretty good. It's pretty chilly this morning. I wanna be able to get comfortably dressed in my shelter. I wanna be able to stand up. And so, you know, I'm only 5'7", so it didn't have to be very tall. Like a glove. This is it for today on the shelter. I'm gonna go do some Exploring. Unfortunately for Cubby, he sustained an injury with an arrow to the leg, <laughs> which caused him to have to leave, and he didn't get to finish his shelter. <sighs> so I like the idea of Cubby's shelter. I'm a big fan of A-frame shelters. Also, his elevated bed is really good for somebody like me who wants to be off of the ground. One of the things about his bed construction actually though is it tends to bring the cold weather underneath you, which makes it a little bit harder to heat. But if he had progressed a little bit further and sealed it in and made it nice and warm, then a good fire would have helped him keep warm inside. The start at Cubby Shelter was a great effort. I would have loved to have seen the final build. Oh, that's so comfortable. Peter decided to build a Kalarvik, which is a tent style shelter built from willow branches. The benefits of a shelter like this are that it's fast to build, it's easy to gather your resources, and it stays really warm inside because of its dome structure. Let's look at Peter's build.
Up in this area seems like a good place for a shelter, but again, it's too close to this game trail. Not only do I want to avoid the bears and the wolves, I don't want to scare away any other animals that will be walking along. For my permanent shelter, I'm looking for a spot that is as solid and dry as possible. Most of this area is covered in moss, tree roots, a lot of flammable things, and I don't want to light the whole forest on fire. So I need to find a spot that has, you know, a more muddy base, and digging into that mud is going to be vital for the type of shelter I want to build. All right, this is the uh, spot that I picked for my permanent shelter. These spruce trees will give me some shelter from wind, the rain, or far enough back from the river that it's not really in the wind. So, cut down some spruce trees. I'm basing my shelter off of a Kaluravik. It's a traditional shelter of people in this region. It's made with green alders and willows. One down. It's built in a way where you, you stick one end of the alder into the ground and you, you bend it over. Do the same thing on the other side and you tie them together and you end up with sort of a, a dome shape. All right, I'm sorry for the twang sound my shovel makes because it's pretty loud when I do this. Oh, easy there, shovel. Before I get any farther, I need to build a bed. That way I know exactly how big this frame should be. By the way, I'm peeling this pole because it'll be less flammable. In my permanent shelter, it's really fast to make. I don't have to fell any big trees. Most of these trees I can just cut with my shovel. There. And it's going to be small enough that it's going to be efficient to heat up in the winter. That's coming along. I figured I might as well build something that people have been living and thriving in for thousands of years. Clearly it works. I'll get the first layer of spruce boughs on, trim off all these little things that I'm worried about breaking my tarp. First batch. And then get yeah, tonight's spruce boughs on the bed. And just keep going, filling all the gaps. This is from one white spruce that I cut down, so I think I might do the floor with these too, just so I can put my feet down at night and not step on the wet moss. All right, should we try it out? Let's do it. Oh, that's so comfortable. Now just to get my tarp. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important piece of the shelter right here, the tarp. I'm extremely happy with how my, my permanent shelter is turning out. It's, it's exactly how I pictured it. Hopefully get the shelter sealed in and the entrance started. Like an igloo type thing, you know how they have those doors that stick out. It's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm gonna build a bit of a arch door, maybe stick out to about here. So we'll make a pretty little arch like this. Look at that. Oh. Regular jam knot and then you tie another knot. I'm using snare wire on this part because I feel like if there's weight from snow or anything on here, it's gonna put more stress on these. All right, two more down here. Do the same thing on this side. If you use a bit of joinery like these, you basically just need to hold this in place and you need to use less cordage. The entrance is complete. Turtle shell. Wow, it's starting to look like a look like a home. Perfect. Uh, it seems rock solid, and I think it's gonna work out great. This is home for the next couple months. I really like the design of Peter's shelter. Using smaller trees helps him not burn as many calories. The final shape of the shelter is really gonna help him stay warm and he can put it up really fast, which can help him get onto other things like hunting and fishing and getting the food he needs. Lane two log cabin. <laughs> Cause uh, it's lane two in the back, logs around the front and the sides. Dusty started building his permanent shelter on the first day. He went with a lean-to log cabin, which means the rafters lean against a structure that is already there. It's a quick build and makes efficient use of the surrounding trees and the natural landscape. So let's check out Dusty's build. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? 
Go in there and check that out. Water didn't run down through here. Probably a dead spot for a shelter. Dirt hole. We'll see, I guess. I am focusing on the terrain, mostly. What's around me. You know, the right materials to use to build your shelter. Where I come from, there's overhanging caves there where you don't have to worry about shelter. You don't have to build enough. Just go with the flow and crawl in it. I found that spot. All right, I'm going for it right here. Get a long tree right there. So I'm gonna go immediately to building a permanent shelter because you'll waste a lot of energy during your temporary. We'll make it work. You don't have to be pretty to get the job done. Mom, she was worried about the grizzlies getting me. You try to live with grizzlies, Sooner or later, one of them will get curious, wondering what you taste like. You don't take no chances around them because uh, they're the king of this world. So I plan on using around about 60 to 80 logs. It'll be a lot more sturdier than a, a temporary. And uh, I'm building a lean-to log cabin on the design. Keep out any unwanted visitors. The reason why is that it's put up in a very fast, efficient way. That's just keep me up off the ground and put a tarp on it and put some more stuff on top of that. Lean to log cabin. Because <laughs> uh, it's lean to in the back, logs around the front and the sides. I'm gonna take and bind these logs down. That way they don't teeter totter on me. Small is more efficient. You just kind of slap it together real quick, and it's real good sturdy. I didn't jam knot. That's solid. Long term wise, I do have to uh, winterize my shelter. All right, guys. Main part of the shelter is done. I have done it. I have built it. I came. I saw, and I destroyed it. I want to build a little, little bit of a flat door here for this. Move up against there. I bind it together anyway. Come on, there, everybody. Pressure me not. You like them apples? Now it's the easy part. Let's go around and check it good. I chose this particular location because of the materials that was in the area. Oh, there's plenty of moss around that you can tink with. Yep, boy. We're right on along with this project. Just cram it in the cracks. Works like a windbreak. All right. Got all the walls done and everything. Yeah, that's about it. Feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> One week behind us, many more to go. To me, with Dusty's location, there are pluses and minuses. The trees are great cover against the elements and especially the wind. He also made great uses of the local resources, being able to chink the openings of his cabin. But personally, I prefer to be more out in the sun because it's so vital. There you go, there's my stove, so. I'm gonna wash up, and then we're gonna test it out. I'm so excited. Michaela found a big, sturdy tree and decided to attach an A-frame to it. An attached A-frame is sturdier than a regular A-frame while still maintaining the benefits of a sloping roof. Let's check out Michaela's A-frame. Welcome to my space. Got it cleared out and my pole's ready to go. Let's do this. I just really want this. <laughs> tree for rain protection, for snow protection, wind protection. I'm looking at this big tree and it's really strong and I feel like I should attach my main shelter to this tree. And looking around at the base of the tree, it's really dry. 
So I feel like this is actually a sheltered area. So there's less rain. It seems like it's not as windy. So I think this area has a lot of potential. I'm going to start shoveling my fireplace. So it's not really a pit house that I'm digging. I'm doing a sunken fire and a sunken floor. I wanna make sure my shelter is not too elaborate, but I gotta spend some time on it so that it gets me through the winter. All right, today is simple. Just dig, dig, and chop, chop. I really want to make a simple A-frame shelter, but I want to attach it to this main tree so that it'll be stronger. Oh, strength. Strength. But I really want to dig the floor because there's a lot of warmth that comes from the earth. So I could utilize that warmth. And then I'm thinking about one side of the shelter is facing south. So that's where it's going to be nice and warm from the sun. And then the other side is the north. So that's where the main winds are going to come. I'm going to leave all the trees there to be a wind block. And then have my fireplace on the east side so that hopefully there's not too much wind that's blowing into my shelter because I want a smoke-free shelter as well. So, I don't know if you see it, but the fireplace is gonna be slightly lower than the rest of it. The idea behind it is that heat will rise towards here. So hopefully that's correct. <laughs> it's time to go get some ridge poles. I'm going to use willow branches as my bindings for my shelter. Splitting the willow down the center to make it easier, more pliable. One thing I really like about this area is there's a grove of spruce here. There's quite a lot of spruce and they're all like the perfect size for building a shelter. Oh man, it's gonna be fun to go back with my husband and build the next cabin. I gotta help him more. I'm also nearby the river and there's a lot of mud down there so that I can use that uh, for fireproofing the shelter and for building my stove. And then I'm gonna bring up all those rocks and make my stove. There's the stove and then there's the insides. Day seven. I still have some work to do. The stove is gonna be a huge project. Um, so there's a lot more to do. I plan to build a stove out of stone and clay. I really want to have a good heat source inside of my shelter that is safe. Uh, so if it's in stone, that means there's gonna be less chance it sparks in my shelter. A shower in the sauna would be so nice. And then if it's built of stone, there's also gonna be radiant heat in the stones even after the fire goes down in the middle of the night. This is the last mud, people. There you go, there's my stove. So I'm gonna wash up and then we're gonna test it out. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, first test of the stove. Chimney seems to be working. Well, everybody, that is my first ever stove. I'm pretty proud, pretty proud of it. I can't believe I did it. I really like how Michaela used a standing tree as part of her structure. It's really added to the integrity of the build. Michaela did a great job of utilizing the resources like the mud to construct her stove on the external part of her shelter, which gave her a lot of the heat and not as much smoke. Michaela had a really strong build, and I'm certain if she had been out there a little bit longer, it really would have stood up well to the elements. I'm gonna go all out on this thing. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Jake built a wikiup style hut for his permanent shelter that he called Casa del High Rock. It's a sturdy design with a dome shape that makes it resilient in all types of environments. Let's watch. 
the kind of structure I want to build, I need a good supply of mud. And since I don't have that, uh, I have to go out and look for a spot that has enough spruce where I can just do a quick wiki up. Wiki up is like picture a teepee, but rather than using skins to cover the frame of the teepee, you use brush. This is the uh, little spot that I thought I'd try to build a shelter. And we're gonna start cutting some trees. So I am 6'3 or 6'4 maybe with my boots. I want it to be at least twice as wide as me. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna have a raised bed. And, you know, a teepee or a wiki up has a cone structure. And the closer you get to the wall, the less headroom you've got. And there's our first pole. In order for me to have the size of shelter that I want and I'm going to need, I'm gonna need at least a dozen poles about four inches in diameter. Finding those is going to be a trick here. But if I can do that, and if I can make a really good frame and set a good foundation for this wiki up, it's gonna provide me enough shelter from the rain and enough insulation to last through the winter. I'm sweating like a pig. Now, hopefully I can lift all three of these. There we go. Not going to be very big, but It'll work. Pretty soon this will be Casa del High Rock. I like how it's shaping up as far as its footprint and everything. And I'm gonna go all out on this thing. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Uh, <laughs> can't wait. This place sure is beautiful. <laughs> My kind of place. So I'm gonna do a layer of spruce boughs, the tarp, and then another layer of spruce boughs. The thing about a wiki up is that you don't have a hard seal from the weather. It provides a lot of really good insulation, but it does that by slowing down the air from the outside. There she goes. With a teepee, you're sealed off from the elements outside. Rain can't penetrate. The way that you accomplish the same kind of weather resistance with a wiki up. In this case, I'm using spruce boughs. Now there should be enough here to cover that thing. Water runs right off of a spruce bough if it's pointed downward. So I need to make sure that all of the spruce boughs that I use are pointed down towards the ground so that the water can run down the outside of each spruce bough to the next spruce bough until it reaches the ground. Coming together. I'm gonna need about six inches to 12 inches of spruce boughs built up on the side walls to keep me insulated and protected from the outside. Due to digestive issues and abdominal pain, Jake was medically extracted from his site before he was able to complete his shelter. So Jake's wiki up is a great design. Not only is it good for keeping all the elements from gathering on your shelter, but it's great as a windbreak because the cone shape makes the wind actually go directly around your shelter. Jake's shelter was on its way to being an excellent build. Unfortunately on the show, anything could take you out at any time. Touches the ground, touches the top of the chimney. I just gotta tighten it up and it is squared away. Isaiah went all out and built a unique bunker style log cabin. He was looking for a rock solid build, excellent insulation and plenty of living space. Check out Isaiah's bunker. Welcome back to the new build. I am starting out with digging some holes for the four corner posts. Uh, I'm going to need a main frame to be pretty strong because there's going to be a lot of weight going on it. Let's get some poles, yeah. Let's get some poles. So this is the only place on this property where I think I could make the shelter I want to. This area where this lake 
had been washed in, where the floodwaters had brushed all this water in, has made all these indentions. So this area has some parts already cut out, and I just got to dig into the sides around them. Cool. I'm not doing like a log cabin. I'm not going to notch every single corner or nothing like that. But what I do want to do is notch the top pieces that are going on to these posts. That's bad considering I'm doing this with a shovel. I want a large frame. I want to build a super shelter. Wind is going to play a very hard part here this winter. And it's just going to get colder and colder and colder. See where she falls. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to frame this up, block it in, and then I did find a bunch of rocks on the river. So my idea is using the rocks, I'm going to make a huge fireplace because you can't fight winter. That's not a fight you're going to win. All right, how about another row of rocks? Start packing stuff down. Have to do it too crazy packed. I'm just leveling it out here. I got to fill in some gaps so all the dirt doesn't fall in. The fireplace is massive. So far, I think I've made the biggest fireplace that's been on the show. Well, that's about all I got. Let's see. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out these corners of the ceiling, taking away some of my space. That way, I have less to heat up. So I have to be careful here because season after season after season, someone tries to build a log cabin. So I am not trying to build a beautiful log cabin. Still got a ways to go. I don't want to get sucked down that rabbit hole to where all I can think about is my shelter. All right, so that'll hold stuff for now. But right now, it's hard for me to ignore it because winter is coming. It's coming hard. And I have to be prepared. So I just got to prioritize my time. The bunker is it's a tent inside of a shelter. It's perfect. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> touches the ground, touches the top of the chimney. I just got to tighten it up, and it is squared away. Just perfect and pretty darn close. Come on, big guy. So my strategy behind making the warmest shelter possible is I know I am not the best hunter out here. I know I'm not the best fisherman, and I don't think I'll be able to outstarve anyone. If I can't outstarve them, I gotta outlast them. I wonder if anyone else is putting as much effort into a shelter. I'd say they know exactly what kind of winter to prepare for. So if I build the shelter warm enough, then the winter's not gonna be the factor that takes me out. And I think it's gonna take a lot of people out. There it goes. I think we're in for a winter like this show's never seen. Isaiah tapped out on day 23 due to medical concerns and was not able to finish his shelter. Isaiah's shelter was a large undertaking. It was essentially three shelters in one. He had a bunker, he had the exoskeleton, and he had a tent inside. I liked his build, and I'm sure it would have stood up very well to the elements. Yes, and I didn't die. Sarah's wiki up was a unique build with a modified attachment. The modification that she added to her structure was to extend her doorway further away from the main base of her build, which actually kept the cold air a little bit further away from the internal portion of her camp. Let's check it out. Oh, I need to have a shelter immediately in the Arctic because the days are getting shorter and my work time's going to get shorter. This is great, all these alders will make some good sidewalls for my shelter. The weather's gonna get colder. I just feel the pressure that I need to get my shelter established. Timber! Yes! And I didn't die. Whew. What I'm seeing at my site is I have no rocks. It's all right, it'll work. If I have no rocks, I have no way to build a fireplace. So I have to build 
a shelter that has the ability to have fire in it without a fireplace, my choices are very limited. So I'm gonna go with a wiki up because a wiki up is a winter version of a teepee. Instead of an animal hide as the walls, it's debris, so there's insulation to help hold the heat in. Coming along. Getting there. Definitely getting there. My main frame is three strong center posts with dozens and dozens of smaller posts to line up around it. And now I need to find as much forest debris, leaves, moss, dirt, anything I can to throw up on it to add layers of insulation and to block the wind from being able to penetrate. And now I'm just hanging up some flexible alder branches. And I'm just weaving them in and out of these long branches just so they're locked into place. Hold the long branches in place. Oh, a lot of bend over today. Making my back go, ah! Looking good through there. I had the idea of coming in here and building a small shelter. All right, well, I think that's my roof. My small shelter is now suddenly this big shelter. Just add an extra layer of insulation, I suppose. There's so much left to do, so much left to do, but nothing urgent and pressing. I'm now safe from the weather, which, which is good. My Arctic entry will help keep it warmer in there as well. Yeah, it's gonna work. I could feel the potential for warmth, but it's just sucked right out the door. That keeps the immediate cold air right out of the shelter. My biggest fear is the weather. You know, the elements is what kills people in the woods where I come from. So I consider that a much bigger threat than the predators. Well, I guess I'll try to make this into a door. Oh, this is gonna be the ugliest door ever. But you know what? It's my door, so I don't care. I've noticed that I haven't gone a day that I haven't need to wear my coat all day long. I've noticed the moisture falling from the sky has increased and yesterday we got snow. So the Arctic is starting to show her true colors. That's good. So my Arctic entry is a huge priority. That'll be a big door, so it should help really contain the heat. You know, it's, it's awesome. I, uh, I love that I have some of these skills. It's lovely. I like Sarah's shelter a lot. I know when she was building, she mentioned that it ended up being larger than what she planned. And that can actually happen when you begin to build. It starts to grow into something larger than you initially envisioned. But I do like how she insulated it very well and used the alder branches as cordage to maintain her build, which allowed her to free up her paracord for other things. What we're dealing with right here is most likely the ugliest shelter that's ever been featured on The Alone Show. Dub built an A-frame lean-to meant to withstand any condition. Dub did a great job almost combining two types of builds with an A-frame and a lean-to up against the natural landscape. And he also did something really smart by constructing a wood cache outside of his shelter. Let's take a look. Let's get down to business. I gotta dig, dude. I gotta dig like the wind. There's a lot of freaking bear sign out here. This is crazy. In the Arctic, everything eats everything. I think my game plan is gonna be immediately build a shelter and get some security because I know the bears are gonna be a huge risk. The only thing I can do is make a shelter that's thick enough, strong enough to fortify and make myself at least feel comfortable. <clears throat> bit by bit, we're gonna whittle this earth away Turn it into something that's worth $500,000. Dude, hmm, let's start on our next A-frame. 
progress is slow, but if I put enough time into it, it makes heavy. Should work. That's solid. I'm gonna build a pretty standard A-frame type shelter. I'm gonna try to make at least a third of it underground, so that should hold a little bit of warmth in there. I'm gonna be in good shape going into December. The more I melt this shelter into this hill, the better off I'll be in terms of warmth. And structurally, it's gonna make it stronger. So if I can combine the digging with the building of the shelter, I, I think I can make a hell of a nice shelter out of this. I'm tempted to just pile it up out here and save it. But when I got my tarp in place, and then I can put the dirt on the tarp. Ooh, that feels good to lay down. Don't you dare fall asleep. Too much digging to be done. It's gonna be functional. It's not gonna win any beauty pageants, but it's gonna keep me dry and it's gonna keep me safe. What we're dealing with right here is most likely the ugliest shelter that's ever been featured on the Alone Show. However, it's also gonna be the warmest. I'm doing a really small shelter because the bigger the shelter is, the more you have to heat. One thing I've noticed is people who try to make big, elaborate shelters, often they burn themselves out and spend way too much time and way too many calories trying to make these big things. The winter is very nearby. Today feels like late, late fall, and this shelter's got me kind of stressed out. Currently, my main goal is my fireplace. I want that big, and then I'm gonna put a hole up here for a chimney. And then I need to start putting rafters across this top. That's what I need it. Damn, I'm close. On top of that, we're gonna put some more dirt, and then on the middle top of that will be a chimney of sorts where uh, the smoke can exit from there. I'm ready for cold weather, man. About right there. Right there. My shelter's coming along damn good. That level, I'm gonna extend out to the front to make a wood storage shed, sort of an annex wood storage. I'm gonna pound it in to the ground for extra support there. Something like that. I'm hoping I can keep 24 hours of wood. For that plan to work, this shelter's got to be extremely efficient. I think we can do it. We just gotta continue to grind. Bingo! I've never seen a shelter so insulated. This is an Arctic Circle shelter, for sure. Dub had a really solid build. Anytime you can utilize the landscape as part of your structure helps in your build and helps in the amount of calories that you have to exert during the build. I also really like the wood cache that he built outside because anybody who's been a part of this show knows that the longer you're out there, the harder it is to harvest resources like firewood. Cross the threshold of Fort Moosehead. Our spirit has entered. Timber's A-frame featured additional support beams and a great location. I'm a fan of A-frames, and Timber's is one of the best A-frames I've seen. Here's Timber's shelter. All right. <sighs> Everywhere I've been so far, just from getting through the thick vegetation, uses a lot of energy. My permanent shelter site, I have to be really picky about. So I have to choose a shelter that has all of the critical components, high and dry, materials nearby. This could be the spot for my shelter. I see quite a bit more trees the size that I would want to build with. I've decided on this spot for my permanent shelter. I like that it's south facing. 
and I'll get those last few rays of Arctic sun before it disappears forever. I wonder if I should do that other end first. Let me stand this up and see. I'm making this lean-to shelter out of logs. It's gonna have a straight wall in the front, a door, and it's basically gonna look like the roof of a cabin. Size of materials that I'm using are big. It's because it's all I've got. And the good thing about using these big logs is that I don't have very many cracks to chink between. And now, this back wall back here, you'll notice two poles leaning out. That's how I'm gonna construct my hearth wall. Shelter's looking good. Now comes the part of the build that I've kind of been dreading because I've gotta lay logs horizontally all the way up, measure each one, and it's gonna take a while. I'm in a hurry to get this wall done and get the mud on it. You're just gonna to try to fireproof this wall with this stuff, spread out this mud. I'm building this rear wall so that the sandy mud from the river can reflect heat into my shelter. Reached a good point. Now begins the job of chinking with moss. The moss here is so thin and patchy, and it's mostly dirt that I'm packing into here. This is taking forever. The shelter is all chinked and all finished except the front wall. I'd call that a pretty good day. Best reason to build a small doorway is so that you don't have to build a big door. All right. I can build the deck of the door first, main panel. I have to put some centerpieces on it, but I think I'll cheat and do that with wire. I think this is good. I think it'll be all right. Okay, I need to chink it with moss. I'm in a hurry to get this all sealed. Stop all the cracks. I want it to be fairly airtight. Just hope this thing is as snug as it looks. I've decided to thatch the shelter today with the horsetail grass because I'm afraid that it's gonna rain, snow, or something. All right, carry the last bit. So you've never seen a bushcraft shelter like that. Now, cross the threshold of Fort Moosehead. So today, I'm basically just putting my spruce boughs on my shelter. Then snow will come down these boughs and add another layer of good insulation. I've used up almost all the boughs from all the trees I cut down to build this house. This shelter is pretty tight. Look at this, you guys. Try to give you a good view of the inside. The bow bed, I'm gonna have a nice shelf going all the way down this side. That's simply beautiful, beautiful. In terms of structural quality, I don't think you can get much better than what Timber built. I like the way Timber chose to have a south-facing shelter because it maximizes eastern and western sun exposure. He had good solid walls, a good solid roof. He used the mud inside to keep it warm. He had a really well-built door. And not only did he use the moss and the mud for chinking on his roof, but he also had the addition of the horse hair to make that rain just shed right off. Timber's A-frame was one of the best constructions I've seen on this show. Slow and deliberate. You gotta find ways to be as efficient as possible and save calories. William used his survival skills when building his trapper's tilt. Trapper tilts are traditionally temporary pitch log cabins built along trap lines and in hunting camps. Let's watch. I kind of like this area overall because there is resources here. I know there's beaver, there's rabbit, there's fish that way. A lot of firewood, birch bark. 
Good enough for me. Only wants enough to survive. This is my first time above the Arctic Circle, and I need to build a shelter. I'm looking for the resources and a safe place to put the shelter. First 20 days up, I must have my shelter done, because here in the north, winter is going to sit in fast. I know that. I come from Labrador. Winter sets in fast. It's going to sit in even faster here, especially with a diminishing daylight. And remember, small, small, small as you can. The terrain is a bit rough, but there's a lot of birch there. I'm really liking the size of the birch. It's going to be easier cutting for a shelter. You don't want to be exerting too much energy. My shelter is going to be small. A small shelter will take less resources to build, and a large shelter is going to take more energy, but it's also going to take more firewood to heat up and everything else. So you're going to lose more energy day by day as it gets colder because it takes more and more energy to heat that bigger air volume. Slow and deliberate. You got to find ways to be as efficient as possible and save calories, because that's a lot of energy that you should have kept for something more important. She's coming, boy. She's coming. The type of shelter I want to build is like the old Labrador Trapper Tilt style. Look at that, boy. I'm building a Labrador Trapper's Tilt because I take a lot of pride in what those old trappers did and the struggle they had out on the land, and I kind of want to be able to show that tilt and understanding the lifestyle of the old Labrador Trapper. And like I said, I only want something big enough to survive, and I want to mention. Back in the day, some trappers had up to four and five tilts in a row. They would travel, sometimes days, to get to the trap line, but they had like one main trapper's cabin. And then from about a day's walk from that main trapper's cabin, they had this little small tilt. It wasn't huge. It would set traps along the way. They get to their little tilt overnight there. Next morning, they would get up, another day's walk to a different trapper's tilt. And that was the trapper's lifestyle. I'm really proud, you know, what the old trappers done, how tough they were. Little by little, bit by bit, she'll come together. I'm gonna have to go get some sticks, I suppose, and try to frame up a door. I wanna get my shelter and everything complete. When all the hard work is done, then I'm gonna focus on securing food. I think they'd be good at it. Yeah. But right now, shelter is the main thing. I got the straightest I've seen, but geez, everything looks super squish now. That's it. Usually you got. Being uncomfortable keeps you in the game. Getting cold could take you out of the game. Once this is all with the branches and everything else, it's gonna be pretty cozy in there. Yeah, that's the last of that. Look at this. It's already done. Yeah, a little bit of rain coming down there now. It's pretty overcast, so. Everything is great, good so far. <laughs> But for now, I think I'm just gonna roll in and have myself a little snooze. William's trapper tilt, I believe, was an excellent idea and not a method that has been approached by any other contestants on this show. He built a simple, fast shelter in a location that he could easily duplicate and resurrect in another spot. He was able to stay warm, stay fortified, and outlast any other person on the show. <laughs> Thanks for checking out the shelters from a lone Arctic Circle with me. Congratulations to this season's participants. It's inspiring to watch their determination, grit, and creativity. Look at my fortress. Until next time, stay resilient, stay adventurous, and stay tuned for more unforgettable moments to come on Alone.